Okay, I wasn't sure if I was going to actually pick this one up, but here it is. Here is the Hot Toys Stan Lee from Thor Ragnarok. I would say one of the interesting things about this figure is the packaging. Very much like the original Guardians of the Galaxy 2 Stan Lee. And as you can see, the box is pretty big for a standard 1-6 scale figure. Now I picked this up from a guy on Facebook called Daniel Ward who gave me a really good deal on this. A big shout out to him. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have got this guy if it wasn't for the price that I got him for. But um, yeah, I'm very happy with how much it cost me because it, it was practically a steal. But here he is, Stan Lee from Thor Ragnarok. Really looking forward to this one. Let's get into the unboxing. It's really big for a normal standard 1-6 scale figure. And that's because they've done something similar that they did with the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Stan Lee figure, which is they've given it a blister pack and then the packaging is separate from the figure itself. It's really cool and quite funky looking, but the truth is it's not very practical. Okay, let's get unboxing this. I've already taken the tape off the top because I'm doing this one-handed. We can take that out and inside, that's what it looks like. It's a bit of cardboard in here, get this off. Come on, you get out of here. Gone. And then this is the figure inside. Let's slide it off, voila. And this is him in the plastic bag. Let's get this plastic off come at you there we go look at that using my feet as well that's practicality for you now as you can see this is the blister pack it's got marvel thor ragnarok logos all over this it seems to have some really cute quirky sort of graphics on here pow and whatnot it does have the movie park masterpiece logo hot toys one six scale collectible figure uh, stanley uh barber the yep this is definitely from thor ragnarok now I've got most of the Ragnarok line, but uh, obviously the only one I don't have now is the Road Worn Thor. It was too similar to Age of Ultron Thor and Dark World Thor. I didn't think I really needed to get it. I mean, most people didn't. That's why they didn't make too many of them. And now everybody's kicking themselves because they all want that figure. So if you are thinking about picking up a figure, do so because later on you could be kicking yourself when it's like three, four times the price on eBay. But yeah, this is the blister pack. Now this is the box that um, he's supposed to go in, which is really fascinating because why would you ever store him in this box? I never understand that because you've got the blister pack here, you've got the shipper here. I would, I, I would never store him in this box. It, it looks interesting, but I wouldn't do it. Now I will pull it all out and show you in a minute. But yeah, this is him. That is the figure. Now it's obviously been out of the packaging before and now it's being put back in. So there's a few bits of plastic missing off the figure itself, probably on the hands and feet, but that doesn't bother me. That's not a big deal. It's got that little ponytail, the massive ponytail there. And he's got loads of hands and bits of bobs behind him. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop open this blister pack, get the whole figure out, and we'll have a look at him on the shelf. Okay, and here he is out of the clamshell packaging. You can see that's the box there. This is the figure. And just down below here are all the accessories. Uh, I couldn't fit them into the shot if I'm honest without getting a good sort of like good zoom in on him. So you'll see them all in a minute anyway. Anyway, let's quickly have a look at the box. I know you're interested in that because it's got that really nice sort of quirky Thor Ragnarok design to it. It's got a spot full Stan Lee. It's got the barber. It's got a picture of his like cutting tool there. Sort of like electric buzz stuff. It's very... I don't want to say it's, I don't know, 80s, I don't know, 80s doll inspired almost. I feel a little bit like I'm getting a bit of Barbie vibes from all of this bit here. Not massively, but a little bit. Obviously, it's a Hot Toys exclusive. You've got Power Entertainment, Stan Lee Power Entertainment there. The sort of, this sort of text here is very reminiscent of sort of like print you would have got in the 80s. Thor Ragnarok logo. Then on the side, again, the same logo, MMS, lots of paint splatter and stuff in fact it, it's slowly you know creeping into the 90s with all these sort of quirky pink paint splatters all the way around here and on the back you've got all the people who are guilty of making this thing and then on the side you've got stanley barber mms 570 not much up the top other than the logo and just some more of the background print spread across the bottom and that's it for the uh, box. Okay, let's have a look at the figure himself. And this is definitely a different head sculpt from the Guardians of the Galaxy head sculpt. It's very nice looking. He's got more of a smirk. He's not like on a full grin. This is just the small piece attached to his arm there. 
but then you get this very large big bit. I remember in the movie he was like, oh, please don't cut my hair, please. And this thing's spinning like mad and it looks absolutely terrifying. You have no idea how it managed to cut his hair without taking his head off, but it was quite a funny scene anyway. And uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of the movie. I think it's hilarious. And it's actually one of my favorites in the MCU. But yeah, you can see this got some like nice metallic paintwork in there. Really does look pretty garish and quite frightening. These bits can spin around and these can spin. And then if we take a look, we can actually see it comes with a load of hands. And I'm really excited about some of these hands because, woo, some of them are very fun. The devil horn hands. Fuck yeah, look at those, Ugh, metal. You know, proper showing them off. He's even got the ring on there, the detail. You know what, I think one of these hands is gonna find its way onto the Mandalorian when he's sitting there on his chair with a beer in his hand and he's got throwing up the horns because he's listening to like Disturbed or Metallica or something. <laughs> you know, very, very cool. But yeah, it's very nicely sculpted. You can see all the veins in the back of the hand. The uh, fingernails leave a little bit to be desired. There's not a lot of detail in them. But uh, yeah, I really like the way they've painted the rings on the hand. Look at that nice shiny chrome. It really does look like metal. They've done a great job with that. And then he comes with an I'm with stupid hand, just pointing away there, which looks very good. Now this is for the uh, right hand, which is what this part is here. So you'd have to pull both pieces of this attachment off to fit this on, which, um, you know, I, I wouldn't really do because I'd really want to pose him with the, uh, you know, the barbershop tool on his arm because, you know, that's, he, he wasn't on screen for long, but when he was on screen, it was showing this thing off. So that's how I'm going to pose him. So I don't think anyone's going to pose him like this, but these hands are really good for other figures, including his uh, Guardians of the Galaxy version and maybe, you know, the Mandarin and things like that. He's also got this very strange trigger finger hand. I'm not entirely sure what this goes to because you can't put a gun in there or anything, any sort of weapon. Um, yeah. I don't know what he'd do with that. Sure, it's to hold something, but I don't know what, because he doesn't have anything to hold. Maybe, ah, maybe the hair. That's it. Maybe it's to grip the hair, which uh, is another interesting accessory because it's very, very long. You know, it looks like he's cut this off Rapunzel rather than Thor. But uh, I guess it's there for you if you want to pose him, you know, waving this around or something like he's teasing somebody, but yeah. Very interesting, I'm not gonna pose him with it, but that'll probably stay in the accessories box. And he comes with these really cool glasses here. Again, that's how I'm gonna pose him with these on. They're very nice, very stylish. You can see the lenses are very clear. You can see the hands through the lens. And you can see the detail on the front. Yeah, I like those, this is gonna be fun. He also comes with some extra wrist pegs, but you don't really care about that. Okay, and here he is with the uh, barber attachment fully extended out. That looks really cool. It's a very quirky sort of like a off the wall figure. And I don't blame people if they don't want to pick this one up. It's definitely a surplus to requirement character from the movie. I mean, they could have given us Valkyrie, you know, off the top of my hat or, you know, the Grandmaster. Those two would have been good, but obviously, this one was gonna make money because A, it's a Toy Fair exclusive and they probably still already got the license for Stanley. Probably didn't have to pay much more, if any more money for his likeness. But let's just get him in close and have a look at that head sculpt. Okay, and the detail is fantastic. As per usual, they've got all the paint flecking and the actual real skin texture. It does look very realistic. They've got a nice pearlescent sheen in the hair that gives him that sort of silver fox look. And then you've got like that cheeky grin, look at that. I think they've managed to improve on the moustache a little bit as well. It's not as thick and it's not as sticky outy. So he doesn't look like he's got a really big fat top lip, which is really good. All that details, all the little wrinkles in the face. And then coming down, you can see this shoulder pads. Some very nice sort of mixed sort of colors in there from the bronze to the browns to the slight greys as well. And you can see when I'm turning into the light, there is some reflection in there and it changes the actual colors that are highlighted as you move it around. You see like the little alien symbols down on the chest and coming down. They've actually put some weathering on this uh, tabard maybe. 
like his top. We'll call it a top. Yeah. Let's get. Let's keep it simple, Bill. You can see all the uh, slightly darkened around the edges at the bottom here. To give it a slight weathering effect. They've actually used a really nice sort of fabric on this as well. Look at the stitching. Perfect all the way along. Yeah, the belt at the back again it's got all those different colors the bronze the browns is there's a slight sort of like khaki camel look sort of paintwork in there as well and then up at the back you've got that kirby sort of weird mad alien designs i'm still not entirely sure what that thing on his back is but it's quirky no matter what and that fabric underneath really does give it like like an old 70s or maybe 80s sort of sweat top look and all the paintwork on the uh, barber cutting tool thingy majee let's try not to name it it's too cool to be named coming down into the boots these are rubber they they could do with a, a split in the boot to actually make the legs more articulate but truth is he wasn't a very dynamic figure in the uh, movie was he in fact he was hobbling along not very well just looked like an old doddy kai deliberately so and come down into the stand and it's the typical Thor Ragnarok uh, background design on there Thor Ragnarok logo and then it's got the metal nameplate so it will fit in nicely with all your other figures if you're using these stands I don't I use my own custom made stands now where he's gonna go is around here he's gonna go up with my Thor Ragnarok line there's Gladiator Hulk Loki Thor and Hela and then he's just gonna go in the background there annoying them but yeah like i said the only one missing is road worn thor but i don't know if i'll ever pick that one up it's too expensive for what it is if i'm honest the price to want ratio just isn't there for me if i'm honest but yeah he's really going to work in my ragnarok collection now hot toys if we could get a valkyrie and a grandmaster i will be more than happy i'm surprised they haven't actually gone down and made any more thor ragnarok figures considering how popular the movie is and how much more beloved it is now than when it first came out. But yeah, this is a, this is a really nice figure. It, again, surplus to requirement. It's not massively needed in your collection, but if you can afford him, I'd say he's definitely worth picking up simply because he is so freaking out there in terms of uh, characters they could have made. But yeah, this guy, technically, he can show up anywhere in your collection. And he's gonna look fun and what's the point of uh, collecting if you're not having fun eh okay guys hope you enjoyed the video like and subscribe if you do me a favor now if you can get the fuck out of my cave i'm gonna put this guy on the shelf next to the ragnarok line where he belongs bye bye it's just there looking really cool damn it oh i was talking absolute bollocks anyway take two